Welcome to Eurobike 2019, the home of all bike tech, especially mountain bike tech. We're going to be sifting through the 12 halls indoor and a massive outdoor area to find all the best tech. Want to give us a hand? All right, let's go. It's, it's that way. It's, it's that way. As expected here at Eurobike 2019, we're starting to see the SRAM access wireless transmission on a lot more bikes, and you can't, you can't mistake it really. Look at that rear derailleur, it's a really, really cool piece of kit. Oil slick cassette, and if you look closely, oil slick hubs as well. That's another bit of a craze we're starting to see creeping in. Lock on collars on certain manufacturers' grips, and it's going everywhere. Everyone's going for oil slick, so it's definitely more of a fashion trend. But on the back of this Bulls bike, so this is a 29er, classic four bar design, 140 mil travel, carbon frame up front. It's actually a really nice looking design. Love that house shock, the way that sits into the top tube there. And that rocker design, that is absolutely solid. The back end are really, really stiff on these things. Plenty of room for a 2.4 inch tire. And up front, which something is quite cool, I've just noticed, I've only actually seen on the Uno bikes before are the Gemini caster bar and stem. So this is the Enduro one, so it's a one-piece unit. Now we've seen this previously with the Hickson from Syncross, but actually seeing these aftermarket now on other manufacturers' bikes is quite cool. So as I say, I've only previously seen these on the Uno bikes. It's an 810 mil width bar, 30 mil stem, it weighs 235 grams. Um, I think it looks absolutely fantastic. It's got a 20 mil rise bar on there. There are other options available. Cost about 650 euros, so they're quite expensive. Um, I reckon if you can find a setup that suits you, they're definitely something that cleans up the look, like, look at the front of the bike. Look at this in conjunction with just the twin cables you get from the brakes, and there's nothing else. It's such a clean looking front end. To me, that is what it's all about at the moment, making your bike look as clean as possible. Alice Mega. Now, back in the retro bike days, having colored tires was definitely a thing. Uh, it all started with the Onza tire, known as the Porcupine, which they've ironically just re-released. Um, and then it became the Panarasa Smoke and Dance, which came in their Magic Compound, which came in a very similar color to this. They were specialized with their storm controls and their other tires, available in the gray Armour Gummer, uh, that later came in red. And now I've just seen this tire from Kenda that pleases me. So this one's actually a prototype. Uh, it says up there 26 by 2.25, so it looks a bit more orientated at dirt jump bikes and stuff, but still, you could use that on a retro bike build or a modern retro classic. Now, I've often talked about Cane Creek before. At Sea Otter, we've taken a look at their forks and their shocks, in particular the helm, which is a multiple adjustable fork. And it comes with things like adjustable volume spaces and that, but they're part of the fork inside. You can adjust the travel internally with no additional parts. So I really like the way the brand works. They've also made their angle sets in the past, which essentially is an angle adjustable headset by using the gimbal system. Like, absolute genius, and you can fit all the way that your bike feels. Now, Cane Creek are forward thinking and they've just announced something very, very cool. They're starting to use these new SKF bearings, but the bearings, they're known as matrix bearings. They've existed previously, but no one's actually tapped into using them in the bike industry. And the coolest thing about these is it's a polymer bearing. So there's no cage, there's no gap between the bearings. They're self lubricating and nothing can get in to damage those bearings. They're completely jet wash proof, they're mud proof, they are basically mountain bike proof. I think these, come and have a look, are the coolest thing I've seen in a long time. So this is your typical kind of bearing case you get in a cartridge bearing. So you've got the inner and the outer race, you've got the seal, which is the black pieces on either side. That's what keeps the crap out, but that, more importantly, when you jet wash your bike and when you get it submerged in water, that's where water can creep in. And of course the bearings, they're held in little tiny cages on the inside here. That's why they need to be kept clean and greased in order to roll smoothly. Now you can see already where the problem can arise with bearings, and it's why we need to change them constantly. It's because of what we ride in, in mountain biking, mud, wet, grime, sand, all that sort of stuff. It gets in and it damages them. Now this is an example of one of these new SKF matrix bearings. This is actually a marine use one. This isn't a bike one. It's a bit bigger, but you can see how this works. You've got the bearings on the inside there, and you've got a polymer, self-lubricating polymer, around the outside of the bearing, so nothing can get in. And the fact is when you see this in bike use, as Cane Creek using it, this is how it sits on the inside. I think this is absolutely mega. Um, this is about as nerdy as it gets for tech, but genuinely, 
I'm so, so happy that this is being used. This makes my life a lot easier in a British winter, and I'm sure it's going to be really good for a lot of other mountain bikers. Check them out. So it's really nice to actually see a set of the Silver Forks in person. I've referenced these before on that weekly GMBN Tech Show, and just look at the actual adjusters on the top. We've seen this in images before. I've not been lucky enough to actually try these out in the flesh, but they look every bit as amazing as I thought they would, even in that ultraviolet purple. Uh, definitely, I think, um, a Marmite colour for a lot of riders, that's for sure. And something that's very cool I've just seen is the compression tuning assembly. So if we just go over here to this, you can see they offer seven different behaviours of compression tuning. And the colour correlated, so you can actually identify them. And if you look down here, you see I've got a green one here and I've got the copper colour one. And you can see it's got a different amount of holes for oil float on them. This is really cool to see parts like this as a custom offering off the shelf for riders. Super cool stuff. So usually I would expect to come to Eurobike to see production stuff, but actually the guys at 661 have just let us see some rapid prototypes of what's to come down the line. So we've seen more highly ventilated full face helmets from many brands out there on the market. Um, and this is gonna be their take on it. It's gonna be called the Halo. This of course is just a prototype, so it's a completely unfinished sample. In fact, the inside is nothing like the production is going to be it's likely to have dual density foam on the inside so that means something like eps and epp um, of course that has different characteristics to it they're going to be using a fidlock buckle system so that's that magnetic system we looked at fidlock a couple of years ago here you're about with the fidlock bottle system which is absolutely excellent so their magnetic buckle is a really good system um, i think they're going to be working with d3o as well so d3o make the impact resistant it's like a highly viscous rubber Nice and soft, um, like malleable, but when you hit it, it becomes hard. So they're likely to be incorporating that into the helmet. Uh, and it's gonna have a retention system and probably adjustable um, face forming pads as well. So I think it's a really cool system. Uh, it looks great, in my opinion. I think it's a nice looking helmet. It's good to have a full face helmet, but with the ventilation, that means you're not gonna take it off for those climbs and other areas where you could still hurt yourself. They've also got a trail focus helmet, but to be honest, this is what I've been more interested in seeing. Now, something else they've just shown us as well, another prototype, uh, although this is a super rough prototype. It's a Recon pad, but this is gonna be called the Recon Advanced. This is the elbow one, but they're doing a knee shin pad as well. The knee shin pad comes up extremely high on the inside of your leg. Uh, the idea is that they're gonna have minimal retention there. Fits more like a leg warmer, something like that. So it's not gonna ride around. You're not gonna need to pull a big sort of strap on to keep it tight on your leg. But the main feature of this is the fact it's gonna have a removable slider on the top. So the retention straps are not gonna be like this. They're actually gonna come through the surface of the Kevlar that goes over the D30. In fact, you can see a preview hole there. And the idea is that these are nice and malleable for all day riding. And you can ride them just like this, or you can ride to the top of your gnarly descent. And then you can put the plastic cup on so you have a hard cap protection. Of course, that isn't full size and that is not a production one. So they're gonna look very different, but I love the idea of combining soft and hard caps because you can't beat a hard cap when it comes to all out protection for your kneecap. But not everyone wants to ride in them because they do restrict movement. And I have to say, well, I do tend to uh, on the more flexible side of things. So combining them both could be onto a winner there. I think that's really cool. So keep an eye out for those. That's the Recon Advanced coming very soon from 661. DMR are super famous for building steel dirt jump frames. They started way back in the late, late 90s actually um, with the DMR Trail Star and then followed by the Sidekick and all the other frames they had. I've actually had one of each of those in the past and even back then you could run them with different size wheels. They had the really cool system where you could move the brake bosses long before we used to use disc brakes and everything. Now they still have the Sect available in the range. It's a great value bike. I think it's about 750 quid, so probably fairly similar in euros and US dollars. But the European market and the US market have actually been asking for an aluminium version of the same bike. So this is a prototype. It does say um, proto no photo, but I guess this doesn't count because we're on video. So I'm gonna run with that. I have been told to say though, uh, obviously this is a prototype, so it's not a finished sample. The stack height here is gonna be a lot lower, so you're not gonna have that protrusion on the top, so you're gonna be able to really slam that saddle down, but pretty clean looking frame, and I think it's quite cool that they're doing this. Uh, definitely some influence, I reckon, from uh, Ollie Wilkins and his traveling fame around the world, but uh, yeah, good to see that they've got an alloy bike alongside their famous, really nice riding, I've gotta say, the steel frames. And as I just referenced, this is that steel DMR set. So this is a little bit more about their heritage, going back to the steel feeling. Comes a lot from the 20 inch world of riding trails, something that the DMR team will actually still do 
themselves. There's something I love about a dirt jump bike. They're so clean and simple. The single speed transmission, high rise bars, the slender looking frame, nice and stiff, but compliant at the same time. A great value bike by all accounts. So for under 800 quid, I think that's um, a bit of a bargain by all accounts. We quite often refer to Industry 9, especially when talking about the hubs like the Hydra and stuff. Uh, they're renowned for that and they're unique wheel builds, but actually something that always takes my eye are these quick release bolt through systems that they have. So at a glance, it just looks like a fancy version of what might replace a standard QR15 axle. So this one is a 15 by 100, for example. But I think it's really cool. If I lift this up and I push this button on the back and I pull this, what have we got here? So inside you've got some Allen bits to store inside the handle and you use this effectively to, uh, as a giant Allen key. I think that's really, really cool. Housing tools on the bike in an area that literally is always hollow. So I think that's super cool. Okay, so that is part one of Eurobike 2019, some of the coolest bits of tech that we found. We're here for the rest of the week, so there's going to be loads more videos coming on GMBN Tech, so keep an eye out for those. And also keep an eye on EMBN for more electric mountain bike related stuff. And if you want to see today's video that also went out, our weekly news show, click down here. As always, give us a huge thumbs up and don't forget to click that notification bell because when tomorrow's video launches from Eurobike 2019, you'll get a little notification on your device. See you later.